Alright everybody, in this video we're going to be teaching you how to achieve a cracked ice basing effect. You'll need the following Citadel paints. The Agrellon Earth Technical Paint. The Rack White Dry Brush Color. The Corax White Base. The Gulliman Blue Glaze. And the Valhallen Blizzard Technical Paint. And for this video I only used two brushes. I have here a size 1 brush been well loved, well used. Any size 1 brush will be just fine. And I have a slanted small dry brush from Army Painter, but any dry brush will do just fine. So my first step is going to be the liberal application of my Agrellon Earth. You'll notice I've loaded up my brush and I'm going to gob it on all over the base. If you get a little bit of it somewhere you don't want, like I did here on the foot, I don't want you to worry about it. Just rinse out your brush and leave a good amount of water in the bristles. You can use that to thin down the Agrellon Earth and wipe it away while it's still in its liquid state. Even if you get it on the foot somewhere and miss it, don't worry about it. In the final step there's a way to go over it and cover it up so no one will know. Now notice I'm not being exceptionally careful here. Just taking my time around the soles of the feet, but I'm globbing on the Agrellon Earth everywhere else. Putting on a nice, thick coat of this material will allow for it to have larger, more noticeable cracks when it's done drying. And those big cracks are what you're looking for. So here's a basic idea of what you're wanting it to look like after you've finished applying your Agrellon Earth. Notice it's lumpy and thick like gravy. That's the consistency that you're looking for. I'd give it about two hours or so to dry before attempting to move on to the next step. This is how everything should look once the Agrellon Earth is nice and dry. You may have to eyeball it. If it isn't dry when you come back to it, set it in front of a fan or something just to give it some extra time. If there's some areas of the base that haven't cracked, don't worry about it. We can cover those up later and it won't be something anyone thinks about when they're looking at the miniature. Now I have out my Corax White, and in this step we're going to paint over the Agrellon Earth so we can set up the optical illusion of ice. Most cartoons or paintings depict ice with a little hint of blue to allude to the water underneath the surface. So in order to set that up, I want to start with this almost chalky white. You'll need to be a little more careful as you go over the base than you were with the Agrellon Earth. Just try not to get any of the paint on anything but the base. I don't want you to worry about thinning the paint down here, because as we layer other colors over top of it, when the whole thing is done, no one is going to know that you didn't. So give yourself a bit of a mental break here and just concentrate on getting as much of the brown colored white as you can. Get inside the cracks as well, because that's where the blue we add later is going to sit, giving the appearance of water underneath. With the Gulliman Blue, I'm going to leave a good amount of water in my bristles to thin it down since I don't want the full brightness this glaze usually brings with it. If you don't have access to this particular color, you can thin down a bit of Citadel Talisar Blue Contrast with some of the contrast medium and leave a bit of water in the bristles when you apply it. I want you to notice here how little of the color I actually use. That's because a little goes a long way. I don't need a ton of it in order to achieve the optical illusion effect that I'm going for here. So get a little onto the tip of your brush, but siphon away the majority of it and spread a thin layer over the top of your Corax white, allowing it to settle into the cracks from before. If there's some pooling, use the bristles of your brush to wick it away. You want to avoid that at this stage. Next, I'm going to use my slanted brush to apply a thin dusting of rack white to the base. I'm going to lightly dry brush it on until it has just enough white highlight for my personal taste. Now your mileage may vary, but I recommend just applying it until you're satisfied with it. This is going to smooth out the blue and give the illusion of snowfall over the ice, so when you go to apply the snow later on, all the colors will go together. Just add a small amount of paint to the brush and wipe off most of it onto a paper towel or a napkin. Use your fingernail to test how much paint is coming off the brush if you're not sure. When you're satisfied, just go over the entire base and keep in mind that you don't want to overdo it. Once you feel like you're at a good spot, stop. Don't risk adding more than you need and just go ahead and move on to the next step. Now, let's get out the yard coat and apply it to the entire base to give it all the glossy sheen of real ice. You only need a little bit of this stuff, however, so spread it out and try to get as even of a coat as possible while also trying not to get it on other parts of the miniature. This is something I'd give about an hour or so to dry, and if you wanted to, you could stop here. But in the next step, we're going to add on a snowy texture paint to make it look like the mech is stepping through all of the accumulated snow of a blizzard. And this is what it would look like if you chose to stop here. Notice that the mech looks like it's crushing the ice beneath its feet and you can see the reflection of the light coming off of the ice. 
Now for the final step, we're going to use some Citadel Valhallen Blizzard to make it look like the mech is really trudging across the icy tundra by spreading some snow out over the base. Just keep in mind though that this is a texture paint, and so coming straight out of the bottle it's going to look very thick and clumpy, but it will spread out thin over the base, and if you happen to get some in a place that you don't want it, it's real easy to move it somewhere that you do. You don't need a whole heck of a lot here, however, so just apply it wherever it is that you feel like you want it to go. If you cover up some of the cracks, that's fine, just as long as you can still see some of them when you're finished. Now this is your opportunity where you can cover up any mistakes that you made in the previous steps by applying this texture paint over those areas so that no one can see them when it's dry. I would recommend about 45 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour and 20 minutes for it to dry. Come back and check it with your brush, and if it's still pliable, just give it some more time. And you're done! I recommend painting the outer edges of the hex base a dark color to help accentuate the blue and white of the surface, but you can use whatever you want. I used Army Painter Matte Black for the sides and Frostbite by Privateer Press to denote which hex side was front facing. That way there's no dispute as to the front facing when using the miniature on the tabletop, and painting the sides of the base with a flat, dark color will also give your miniature an added look of time and care, making it stand out when someone's looking at it. Thanks so much for watching, I sure hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps you in the future. I'm Tuck Davian, and I'll see you out on the Space Lanes! Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.